<laughs> Every now and then I'll, I'll uh, come across uh, those uh, pelicans and <laughs> they're so, so beautiful and graceful to see flying in the sky up above. Absolutely gorgeous. We're going to go over just a few myths that I think we need to watch out for and not believe in in wildlife photography. And we're also going to go on a hike and try to get some wildlife here along the marsh and then also along the lake shore. Uh, there is a yellow warbler. Dang, let's see if we can get Yeah, those guys are so fast. <laughs> the first one is thinking that you need full frame. Uh, I think for whatever reason, lately, within probably the last couple of years, it seems like there's been a lot of hate towards uh, crop sensor cameras. And uh, that in the wildlife photography niche that you always gotta have full frame, that it's full frame or nothing. Now granted, full frame does have its benefits as far as low light capabilities and dynamic range. Uh, but I think that uh, we scrap out all too often uh, the importance and uh, just the versatility of using a crop sensored camera, especially for how uh, it's a little bit more smaller, lighter, more compact than a full frame camera. And most importantly, you get more reach because with a crop sensored APS-C body, this RF 100 to 500 here becomes an 800 millimeter equivalent. And if you have a 600 millimeter equivalent on an APS-C crop sensor body, such as a 150 to 600 Tamron or Sigma, that becomes a 960 millimeter equivalent. So if you come across somebody that comes and tells you that there's no really good use for crop sensor or APS-C bodies, well, let's just hope some birds poop on their head out in the field. So the next myth that I want to debunk here in nature and wildlife photography is this need that you have to have camouflage on all of your outings. Now before all the camo purists uh, crucify me in the comments below, there is an application and a need for it in certain situations such as uh, a lot of waterfowl trying to photograph ducks out in the wild, not yet at your local park, where they're used to being around humans. Talking about far out in the backcountry where wildlife is really skittish. In those types of situations, a, a good camouflage blind or camouflage clothing, or what I normally typically do is just wear a lot of darker uh, mute colors. They laugh at me anyways out here, so I'm kind of used to it. You know that a lot of people out there wearing camouflage are out there not to hide from the wildlife, but to hide from other people. Well played, well played. The 
So the next myth is thinking that you need to have a tripod in order to do nature and wildlife photography. That's absolutely false. You don't. With a lot of the new age technology in these lenses and cameras with the IBIS and image stabilization uh, and the lighter uh, lenses that are available now, it's more easier now than ever to go out there and have fun without a big, heavy, bulky tripod. Tripods are definitely good for stationary work where you're going to be in one location for a long period of time or you're hiking probably a very, very short distance away from your vehicle. There's an application for tripods, especially if you're doing video as well and you want to get smooth footage. 80 to 90% of the time, I'm hand holding. And actually, my back thanks me for that one. <laughs> a lot of different photographers will sit there and tell you otherwise that you need to have a tripod for wildlife photography and that myth is debunked. You don't need a tripod. Especially for these long hikes out here where I'm two, three, four, five miles away from my vehicle. Ain't nobody got time for that with a big tripod. All right. Utilize a tripod only when needed. Get yourself a, a telephoto zoom like a 100 to 400, 200 to 500, 200 to 600, 150 to 600, 100 to 500. These ones are typically really hand, hold, hold, hand holdable <laughs> and more portable and easier to go out in the field and walk around and do long hikes on. last myth is really just thinking that you need to know everything there is to know about nature and wildlife photography to be a teacher to somebody else, to be an encourager to somebody else, to be a motivator to another brand new photographer, somebody who's never been uh, picked up a camera before. Uh, this is a lifelong hobby and it's all about the joy. It's all about the joy of nature photography. There's no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. Get outdoors and enjoy that opportunity that's in front of you with your cameras. Hopefully you guys enjoyed those few photographs that I was able to get in the bucket and those three myths debunked for wildlife photographers. Let me know down in the comments below any other myths that you guys are that you guys know that could be debunked in photography. We'd love to hear about that. Till the next one. God bless guys. Cheers.